I've just got Australia running around inside my living waters, you know. I've put it on hard wash, you know. I'm a quiet guy, really. That's true. But when I, when I get the war boots on, that's it. I'm, I'm a history. It's been uh, nearly 28 years now I've been in ministry. And uh, we started um, when minor chords were demonic. Do you remember that? And when drums should have like four pillows stuffed in the bass drum and, and wet blankets put on the snare and, and you just can't be loud. God says play skillfully with a loud noise. You're not going to like heaven. You know, John was there with the angels going, uh, 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 10,000 uh, times 10,000. That's 100 million angels going, Roar! And not only that, all the animals on the earth were praising God. And everything else in heaven that had breath was praising the Lord. It's huge. Say huge. Not Hugh, huge. Huge. God's big. We're in a time on earth when we've got to have big God in our little brains. Because he's big. All that we do, it's not, none of this matters. Did you know that? And I said that during the worship school. None of this matters. But you know what? It does matter. Because everything in Christ is a paradox. Like Chris was saying, you, to die to live. You let go and he gives it back. You lay it down, you stand up. The way up is the way down. <laughs> die and then he'll raise you up again. Let go of that instrument. But Lord, I'm a guitarist. It's all right, I'll give it back. But it's about him, you see. Now, you know, we've talk, talked about power we talked about authority. We've talked about apostolic authority. We've talked about governance. We've talked about the prophetic. And all of that is about, it's powerful. But it's not your power. It's his power in you. And a lot of Christians today don't understand that it's not you who makes it happen. You know, make it happen theology outside of him. You know, I've, I remember reading once in a, Christian magazine, you don't have to wait on the Lord. Just get your own dream and go and make it happen. Well, what do you need God for? How many people have done that and fallen flat on their face? See, this, this dream, and I've been, I've been to properties smaller than this in different parts of the world where God's doing a similar thing. This kind of dream's a God dream. And I just, you know, every time I walk in this property, you just... <laughs> It just, the spirit goes off. I love it. I went to Brownsville in, in, in Florida when it was at its peak, you know. And it's in a most nondescript place. You know, West Street from where we were staying in this motel. You drive down West Street and there's like 12 huge churches in West Street. You know, in America, they're just mental. They have a street then they have a five-acre block and there's a church there. Then they have another five-acre block and there's the church of the upper room glass window. And then you go, there's the thir first Pentecostal church and then five acres down the road is the third Pentecostal church. <laughs> it's like, you know, they all walk in, you know, hello, <laughs> and they all walk into their buildings. Nuts, Nutsville. <laughs> and where the Brownsville church was a bit like that. And you, you go right down sort of 12 churches down the road and you turn down this, Sort of, it looks like someone's picked up all the houses and the shops and gone, woo! And that wherever they landed, that was like what it was like, you know? And you walk up, you go in, and it's like you walk through a veil of angels. And the presence of God was absolutely incredible. And there was 4,000 people queuing up to get in all day. I was blessed. They just put me at the front of the queue. It was amazing. I said, Lord, I'm not queuing up. How many hate queuing up? <laughs> I didn't want to stand at the back all day. I said, no, by faith, we'll go and we'll get favour. And they did. It was wonderful. But the presence of the Lord was incredible on that property. And I believe, I sense the same thing here. I believe this week, more companies of angels were sent to gather around this land. There's no, there's no coincidence it's called Zion's Hill. Because what is Zion's Hill? It was a place where Abraham got the most beloved thing. 
Can you imagine your son? You know, it's my jamman on a rock, and I've got this huge knife. Can't imagine it. Place of sacrifice. Okay, where am I going? Jamming, just hold still. You want it in the stomach or up? Would that be better, do you think? Or shall I just whack it through your head? What do you think? Oh, I don't know, Dad, but I'm going to praise the Lord anyway. <laughs> but Abraham, <laughs> Abraham was at that place, you know, to sacrifice the most precious thing he had on the mount there. And you know, I, th- I really believe that uh, we've got to be less... Less of the world today, folks, you know.